now that we finish with the character modeling we are gonna move on to texturing okay so texturing basically involves the UV unwrapping and this is the stage where we actually put the nice and pretty texture okay when it comes to uh, texturing right uh, you need to understand like there is this thing called UV mapping okay so in this picture I have a uh, 3D world and I also have the 2D representation of that 3D world okay so this is basically like the world that we live on okay so in this world we can move up and down left and right and front and back okay basically that is like a 3D okay so very similar to the 3D object in your viewport okay whereas a UV map is basically a representation of that 3D object okay so in this case it, this is a world map so if the object is the the world so the map for it will be the world map and as you can see like each of the faces or each island that you have in the world will be mapped into this world map okay so each of the ocean will be also be mapped here okay so everything will be represented basically in this uh your know, world map okay that's why it's called the world map Okay, but in the 3D we call it like UV mapping. Okay, now this is a better uh, representation of how the process in a texturing. So this has been around for quite some time, and until now we're still using the same technology for games, for film. We're gonna be using uh, UV map. UV. Then you have to put texture and put it back in Maya. Okay, so basically what we do for the previous CA is that we create the object in 3D so this could be your kitchen set right but in this case it's a human head and then we're gonna do the unwrapping inside Maya okay so each of the face that you create here right must be mapped or will be mapped there okay so if you have like 200 faces here then it also be mapped to that one because this is going to be your 2D representation of that object okay so this process is called UV unwrap okay and this flattened pieces they call it UV map okay so it's UV unwrap and UV map now that you finish with the unwrapping then you move on to a different software to paint because Photoshop I mean because Maya cannot do uh, texturing okay things like Photoshop things like Mudbox, now they have Substance Painter, are able to paint a texture on your UV map. Okay, so that software uh, specialized in putting texture. Okay, so this is an example of how the human face texture look like. Okay, so okay, everything is nicely uh, painted, or you can use a photograph also. And once you finish, you put it back in Maya and that's how the games or film have the nice texture when you when you look at or play the games okay so the UV texture definitely need the UV map otherwise you don't know like which region to paint upon okay and one thing that you have to keep in mind is that all these mapping right need to kind of like resemble of your object so for example that like people can easily uh, see how oh, this is probably like the eye region so this is resemble the left eye and this is the nose right and this is the mouth and ear and so on and so on right because there might be someone else that painting that uh, texture for that object okay now uh, moving on we're still like in the same concept of UV unwrap so you may think like UV unwrap or UV map it's like a paper craft so you have an object Okay, and to be able to paint a texture, you need to have some kind of like a little layer to put on top, right? And that layer you need to paint. And once you paint, you can put it back and you're going to get like that nice texture that you painted. Okay, so it's a very similar uh, concept. And again, like we have a few examples. So if we have like this box, right? box have six faces 
and in this case we have the spongebob texture and you can tell like this is the front faces so that one's front and these two will be the left and right right so the left and the other one and these two will be the top and the bottom so it'll be the top and the bottom and this one will be the back okay so that's how that's how the uv map is represent for this object and again when the object's getting more complex the uv also going to get more uh, complex okay in this example um it's going to be more faces to unwrap okay so basically you need like at least six faces right for this head and maybe another six for this hand and the other one and the body and so on and so on okay and that's how they create this nice texture and again this is an example so if you have like a humanoid character this is the kind of UV that you're gonna get so you have the head region you have the body you have the hand the foot and so on and so on okay so it can get a little messy when you have more complex shape okay in Maya there are different type of mapping method okay so we have panel mapping cynical spherical and automatic uh, most of the time about 90 percent you're going to be using panel mapping anyway okay and maybe a bit of cynical okay this one i don't usually use so even if you use a complex object you're just going to need like these two pretty much okay so something that uh yeah you can try it later okay <clears throat> now one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you need to uh, be concerned about the UV distortion so for example if I have this object so I have like this cube for example right um and I have this texture so I have my name on it so if you look at this side right this is pretty long from this to that okay so a UV need to kind of like resemble like I was mentioning before roughly on what the real object look like so if this side is that long so the uv map should be around like that or it's roughly the same right with this one and if you put a texture everything looks nice you see the on the display like it it display my name correctly now on the right hand side you notice like it is exactly the same object but if you look at the uv right it's actually like smaller right as compared to this guy all right or shorter rather and if you look at the display my name is being displayed like incorrectly it's kind of like it's being distorted okay so it's kind of like stretch so my name is like stretch okay so this is how we call uh, uv distortion okay so it can happen like vice versa so if your uv let's say like you create like uh, too long right so if you compare this size and that size it should be roughly around there but if you make the uv map for too long then my name will be squash right so it's either going to be distort or it's going to be squash okay so this is something that you have to pay extra attention okay so the uv size okay or the uv, the UV map okay should be roughly around the same size as what the object look like so if it's uh, that long right from here to there so the uv should be around that length okay uh, maybe a bit of uh, too small or too big is still okay but in this case number two is just it's just too small or it's, it's, yeah okay so you need to fix otherwise you're gonna have like a very bad distortion okay now another thing right is the uh, textile density right so you need to worry or concern about the textile density okay so a uh, textile density is a unit of a texture space so in short is that how much uh, pixel you can put in the uv map okay so in this example i have the good one and i have the bad one right so if you notice right all the good one right i have the checker pattern all around the robot right roughly the same size Whereas if you look at in the bad example, some of them have this size 
and some of them even smaller. If you look at this guy, right, it's actually quite small. Okay, the checker pattern is quite small. And this one gets bigger, and this one also gets smaller. So, what it means, like, uh, some of these texture will be displayed like quite low res, as you can see, like, it's going to be quite blurry, and in some region, it's going to be quite high res. So, you're going to have like inconsistent uh, texture display in your model. Okay, so this is something that you should be. Um, pay attention when you do the UV map. So all the checker pattern, right, should be roughly the same. That's why like the pixel that you can put in here should be roughly the same all around the object. Okay, so basically the texel density kind of like tells you if there is any like uh, pixel that fit here like it too little or too much. Okay, so when you have the checker pattern, it helps you to kind of like see whether everything's okay or not okay. Okay, so again in here I have like another example. So in the good one, everything is roughly the same. Okay, so you can see like all the texture is being placed, or the texture density like fit in the correct ratio. Whereas in this one, you can see like this one is going to be like pretty high res box. Right, and the floor will be low res, okay, which resulting to be very blurry. Okay, so that's what happens if you do a bad uh, text density. Okay, and there's an example. So again, if if everything you put here, if all the checker pattern that you put here like rough, roughly the same size, right, and everything looks like properly, but if you some of them like very big, some of them very small, and this is what you're gonna get. Okay, so you're gonna have like a very blurry texture, and you're gonna have like a very high res texture. Okay, that's why like you should always put everything roughly the same size. And again, this is an example. So the texture density, right, of the good one, everything's roughly the same size, whereas in the bad one. Some of them will have like very low res, very blurry, and some of them will very detail like that. Okay, and you're gonna be end up with something like this. Okay, um, and the next one it's UV seam. Okay, UV seam basically it's the edge where it meet the other edge, and when you put a texture, you need to be very careful because you can see like there is this region where the light color and the dark color kind of like meet together okay so as an artist you need to kind of like make this blurry so people cannot see like there's a technical error happening there okay so this kind of uh, uv seam will make more sense when you're actually doing the uv later okay but this is just something that you should know um yeah earlier okay uh, this is just some tips right so when you do uv map you should never make the UV overlapping because it's going to create issue, right? Because if you have the UV map overlapping, then this region, for example, it's going to have the same color, okay? So there should be no overlapping of one another. And again, no distortion. Make sure everything is like have the same texel density, okay? And also make sure like the UV map that you create, right, uh, is understandable. Because it might be someone else in the studio that doing the texturing, so they need to be able to identify what kind of um, UV map is that. Okay, so for example, I can easily like see this is probably the tire, this is the front portion of the car, and this is the body, right? And this is the back side of the car. Okay, so you need to be easily identify. And again, make sure like you need to stitch them together because the more the more you stitch, like the lesser this thing happening. Okay, so all these will make more sense when you're actually doing the UV mapping yourself.